Roy shouted at the animal to release, but the tiger resisted. He swiped at Roy's feet, knocking him to the ground, and lunged on top of him. 400 pounds of brute strength pinned Roy to the stage. Siegfried Fischbacher and Roy Horn were a German duo who captured the amazement of crowds around the world with their stage performances. They initially met on a cruise ship and began performing together in the 1960s. They wowed audiences with their circus-like acts and dazzling magic shows. Siegfried and Roy quickly built a name for themselves, and by 1990, they were offered an incredible opportunity to work at the Mirage in Las Vegas. These shows were extravagant and unique. Each year, some 400,000 people watched their acts. They were perhaps most famous for performing with white tigers and lions. Headlining in Vegas propelled them into stardom and fame. They performed to sell out crowds for 13 years until, in 2003, their show came crashing to a tragic end. From an early age, Roy had a love of animals. He and his childhood dog were inseparable, and he attributed his future connection with animals to that first relationship. While Siegfried conducted the magic tricks and illusions on stage, Roy danced and pranced with the tigers and lions, commanding them to perform tricks and stunts. It was an awe-inspiring act like no other. At one time, Roy had 63 lions and tigers at his home in Las Vegas. They often roamed around his house and garden, even sleeping in his bedroom. He raised many of them from birth. He was the first person they saw and the first person they respected. Roy relied on the trust he built with the magnificent animals over the years in order to command them during his performances. He considered them his family. One Friday night, however, only hours after celebrating his 59th birthday, one of the white tigers turned on Roy. During the performance, Roy stepped onto stage with his favorite white tiger, Manticore. Joking with the audience, Roy said this was Manticore's debut show. In reality, Manticore had first performed with Roy at six months old and had done so ever since. They had performed hundreds of times together, and the tiger knew the show inside and out. Each move was well rehearsed, the animals were respected, and they provided something the crowd marveled at. The magical duo have performed over 30,000 shows together. Their daredevil theatrics involved elephants and cheetahs, as well as tigers and lions. They had never had a serious mishap until that fateful day. October 3rd, 2003. As Roy led Manticore onto the stage, it's rumored that something in the crowd spooked the tiger, and it advanced toward the audience. Immediately, Roy put himself between the tiger and the people, commanding him to lie down. Instead of obeying his owner, Manticore grabbed Roy's hand and bit down. Roy shouted at the animal to release, but the tiger resisted. He swiped at Roy's feet, knocking him to the ground, and lunged on top of him. 400 pounds of brute strength pinned Roy to the stage. Then, amongst gasps from the audience, Manticore gripped Roy by the neck. Siegfried rushed at the animal, shouting, No, no, no! But Manticore didn't listen and dragged Roy off stage. His master's body hung like a rag doll, whilst trainers rushed at the animal, trying to get it to drop Roy. The tiger did not let up. Backstage, staff hit him repeatedly. They fired a fire extinguisher into the tiger's face. Eventually, Roy was dropped and the tiger ran to his cage. Roy's body lay on the floor covered in blood. The tiger's bite had severed an artery in Roy's neck, crushed his windpipe, and sliced through vertebrae. Staff did all they could to staunch the flow of blood. By the time emergency services arrived, Roy was in critical condition from significant blood loss. Once in the ambulance, Roy managed to utter the words, don't shoot the cat. He was rushed to surgery. The medical team managed to stop the blood flow, but Roy had suffered a massive stroke as a result. Surgeons performed a decompressive craniectomy and Roy was placed on a ventilator. It was uncertain whether Roy would make it. The doctors operating on Roy said that his heart gave out multiple times and he actually flatlined. Luckily, 
they managed to bring him back. Amazingly, within two days, Roy was responding to questions. He was only able to answer by giving a squeeze of his hand, but it seemed his cognitive function was recovering better than anyone thought possible. Roy was told that he may never walk again and suffered paralysis down one side of his body. Miraculously, within three months, Roy's tracheal tube was removed and he was able to talk and eat. Soon after, he could stand, and six years later, the duo returned for a final show. They wanted to end their Vegas extravaganza on a high, and although the show wasn't the same, it was a fitting end to the couple's tremendous career. There is a debate as to what happened on the night of the attack. Roy claims that he fell ill whilst on stage, possibly even suffering a stroke. When he fell to the floor, he said that Manticore was merely trying to protect him by dragging him away from the stage. He said this was an innate behavior that mother tigers do with their young, picking them up in their mouths and moving them somewhere safe. He said that the tiger saved his life. Siegfried said that if Manticore wanted to kill Roy, it would have been very easy for him to do so. Others believe the tiger intended to attack Roy. One of the animal trainers said the tiger was confused. There were reportedly last-minute changes to the routine, which Roy had not practiced with the tiger. When Manticore was in the wrong position on stage, Roy tried to correct it by using the wrong technique. This confused the tiger and possibly angered it, causing him to lash out in frustration. Following the attack, there were protests from animal rights groups saying that show animals should be retired. The U.S. Department of Agriculture also opened a line of inquiry into the accident. They claimed that audiences needed to be at a sufficient distance in the presence of such animals. The show organizers refused to release footage to examine whether there had been a violation of the Animal Welfare Act. The case was dropped. Siegfried's mother had bottle-fed Manticore as a cub. He had been rejected by his mother and required around-the-clock feeding. At six months old, Roy had bonded with the cub and was introducing him to his live shows. They had a special bond. Manticore lived out his days at Siegfried and Roy's mansion in Las Vegas. At the age of 17, 10 years after the attack, he died from an illness, leaving the German duo devastated. How to be tiger safe Number one, remain upright and tall in tiger territory. Tigers tend to stalk and attack most often when you are crouched down. Number two, remain in groups and close to populated areas. Tigers usually attack solitary animals. Number three, constantly change position and look around. Tigers tend to ambush from behind. Number four, carry a firearm and pepper spray. Spray is preferential as it is more effective and firearms can miss their target. Number five, make loud noise and if you know a tiger is stalking you, remain tall and back away.